All right, we're live. Welcome. You are at the virtual book tour for Chiefmaker. You're looking at the Amazon page where you can look inside the book called Chiefmaker, written by Greg Layton. You'll be meeting him in just a moment. Um, he is an Aussie. I'm here in the United States, over 7,000 miles away. And the book is about a five-step blueprint that allows you to rise above the pack and get a seat on the executive team. Now, it's about influence. It's about avoiding imposter syndrome that many people have who are making hundreds of millions of dollars. Maybe it was about childhood or maybe it was something along the way. But it's amazing that the inner game of many thought leaders and executives, marketers, business people, it haunts them along the way and you never would know it. And uh, he'll tell you some of those stories that are astounding to me, how someone who makes over a hundred million dollars or is managing assets of close to a billion can still have imposter syndrome. Now, if you and I have never met, my name is Alex Mondosian. I am your host. And if you have come here as a result of Greg, we're gonna to be together for about 50 minutes and a virtual book tour, so you're clear, is rather than going from bookstore to bookstore to bookstore, signing books, giving free consultations, this is a virtual event where you have an opportunity to buy a book in the Kindle version for a limited time. Now, as you can see on your screen, it's 99 cents. Now that's 99 US uh, cents, which means it's a little more if you're in Australia, but not much more. And what we're gonna do is do everything in our power to inspire and influence you to get the Kindle version, write a review that's certified. That means you bought it on Amazon and you are um, reviewing it in a certified way and you'll get access to a bonus webinar where Greg will be talking about how to avoid imposter syndrome, no matter what business you're in or what level you're at, and how to have sustainable ethical influence. Now, for the next 50 minutes, you're gonna learn all about what a chief maker is, why it's important, how to become one step-by-step. Step. He has a five-step blueprint. And what happens if you do become one? It doesn't matter if you're starting from scratch, if you've been in business for a while and you wanna take it to the new level by having a platform and having more influence, or if you are hoping to exit and scale, it doesn't matter what level, the demons that are between the six to seven inches between your ears always gets in the way. That's called the inner game, and um, I think you'll love what he has to say. So. Um, we're going to do what we can to get you to this page that you're looking at, and I'll give you the direct URL so you go there, but we've got to earn the right to do that. So the first thing I want to do is uh, introduce Greg, and um, Greg, you're on the big screen right now. Let's talk about the specific incident that inspired you with the original idea to write this book, because there are many authors out there, but very few make an impact like you have in such a short time period. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It's uh, good to be here. Matt, I'll tell you, I'll start out by saying this. Uh, a very good mate of mine is a, a guy called Brad Gordon. He's the CEO of a, of a, well, was a CEO of a major international mining company, several billion dollars listed on the London Stock Exchange. And after he read the book, he said to me, Greg, there's nothing like this. Um, I, I just wish I had this early in my career. It would have been a lot easier and I would have got to the top even faster than I did. And this is the thing, I was sitting down with a client of mine one day and he's a very good sort of middle manager or general manager of a, of a reasonably large site. And I was talking to him about his career progression. What was next for him? And what struck me was that even though he's a very, very smart guy, he understands the technical part of the business, it all starts to go wrong when he starts thinking about the next move for him. What is his progression? How does he go to the next point? And this is the thing, what, what tends to happen is, without a game plan for knowing what you're gonna to do to go to the next level, people make a classic mistake. And you know what that mistake is, Alex? What is that they mistake? Work. I can only guess. They work so much harder. They, just, they double down. It's like they get on this treadmill and they're running as hard as they can and they think to themselves, you know what, I wanna to get to the next level. So what do they do? They press a little button, they put up the, the, the the steepness of their treadmill, they put a pack on their back and they wear themselves out. Thing is, they are just going at 100 miles an hour constantly. And as a result, they never get anywhere. So 
I was sitting back with this client of mine and we were sitting in the depths of Africa at a mine site, you know, sitting back one afternoon having a, having a cold beer. And what struck me was that he didn't know what move to make next and there was no guide for him. And I was sitting there thinking, you know what, I, I've coached a lot of people over a lot of years and I'd recommended all sorts of self-help or management books. They all taught leadership or high performance, but none of them spoke about how to be high performance in your career, just your career, nail that, right? And, and when I realized that that wasn't there and that he didn't have a little guide to go by, that's what I thought, that we need the book, right? The book has to be written. So that was the moment that it all, it all began. Well, as far as career goes, I want to be crystal clear that it's not the business you're in right now, whether you're a startup or you're building out to build a platform, mm -hmm. or if you're looking to scale and then exit, career means your entire career path. Some people never want to retire. So it's looking right. at the entire path. I think that's what mm -hmm. we're really looking at. And the business yeah. you're in is just a stepping stone along that clear path to get to where you want to be. So if you just looked at where you're in now mm. and look at the mm. end in mind for that business, it's really maybe 10 to 20% of where you could be depending on the, the age you're at. So chief maker, does that apply to women too? Because it sounds like a, kind of a masculine, you know, it sort uh, of does. Right? There's a woman on, the, there's a man and a woman on the front cover of the book for a very specific reason. I want people to know that it's for men and women. And I, actually, over my career, I've, I've definitely coached probably 50-50 men and women, right? So I, I, don't, I don't really think there's any difference between the two. While it is a you know, masculine term, it, in the corporate world, it's not a masculine term. It's, it's just for men and women. Yeah. Well, chief executive officer, chief operating officer, chief marketing officer, chief information officer, usually they have more responsibility. Oftentimes, they make more money, but they also have to execute. And if they don't execute, they fail. So those who are watching, if they're entrepreneurs or they're just starting up mm. or they don't even know what they want yet, who would you yeah. say is the ideal reader for this book? If someone's curious, because it's available for 99 cents for a limited time on Amazon. So I, I want to do what I can to make sure they, they look on the inside. Yeah, look, the, the title says the five step blueprint for getting a seat on the executive team. And it actually does step you through what is five steps to professional mastery. I could have said professional mastery is a different title, to be honest. So you might be a small business owner. You might be someone who's just starting out as a professional. And I talk about a career progression where you go from professional to manager to general management roles to C-level. It doesn't matter where you are on that journey. What matters most is that you have an aspiration to do more in your career. And if you have some aspiration, you have some inkling that there's untapped potential that you want to harness then this book is for you because it is a step-by-step -step process from going from one level to the next to the next. And it's repeatable. So in other words, if you're watching right now and you're thinking, well, this is not working or this is not yeah. enough, or I know I can do more, this book is for you. And, you know, five-step mm -hmm. blueprint to rising above the pack. You could have stopped right there, but to get, a seat on the executive team means influence. It means status and it means you've earned the right to influence others. So if yeah. I'm looking at the table of contents, which you mm. can, if you're watching right now, and if you go to Amazon and I'll give you the URL in a moment, but if you go there, um, you can look inside before you buy the book for mm. less than one US dollar. Um, where would you recommend for readers to start the book? And um, I never have seen it always to be uh, chapter one. If, if you were to look over someone's shoulder, what would you ask them to start? Look, there's at the end of every chapter, there is a bunch of keynotes. So this is a summary of the book. And when everyone's reading a book, there's something I learned years ago, Alex, which is around some of the theories of accelerated learning. And I talk about them within the book, but I want people to apply those to the book to learn about it as they read it. The first thing is just stop for a minute and say to yourself, what do I want to learn from this book? What can I learn? You have to be open. You have to open yourself up and say, I'm going to learn something out of this book. It's based on the wisdom of a very lot of very successful people. Then skim through the book, go through it and look at all the chapter headings and look at the summary. There's a one summary page at the end of each chapter. It's a bit of a checklist. Have you done this? Have you done that? Have you done this? Go through and do that. And then you'll get a sense for where your pain point is. 
And the, the five steps are game plan, routines, entourage, assets, track record, which spells out great. So nice and easy to remember. Now, if you find that in your career, you feel a bit lost, um, like you're lacking some, some influence with people, maybe you're not earning enough money, you're not getting the opportunities you want, then go and explore game plan. There's a whole chapter on game plan. That's about career strategy. If you feel overwhelmed, like you're out of control, you can't stay focused, then read about routines. If, you get, if you're isolated, you find it hard to connect with people, you don't know the right people, people don't do what you want, you lack influence, read Entourage. It's about, it's about your network. If you don't feel like you've got the right knowledge or information or you're just not up to doing the job yet, read Assets. That's about your knowledge set, right? And then if you feel like you're not getting any cut through, like you, you, you're really, you know, you're spinning the wheels and you're not building something that you can talk about, then do track record because track record is what it's all about. If you've got the track record, you know, in the end, you'll have opportunities coming your way magnetically. Well, let's define what chief maker means. It's, it's not a common term. I know what chief is. I know what a maker is. But mm. what does chief maker define so that you make it concrete for the viewer? Sure. Yeah. So th this book um, will help you become the chief of your career and life. Right? That's what it, is. it makes you the chief again. It puts you back in the driver's seat. And if you do that and then you so choose to become a CEO or a chief, it will help you become a chief. That's what it is. So step one, chief maker is about making you the chief of your career and life. Once you're in the driver's seat, you decide the destination and then you follow the steps and it will get you there. If you choose to be on the executive team, this book will get you there if you follow it step by step. Well, let's jump to chapter two. And um, if you have a case study mm -hmm. or a story that uh, yeah. people can relate to, um, the, the title and the topic is all about routine, which I'm very big on. Many people cram like they did in university right before yeah. finals. We used to stay up all night, eat pizza um, and take uh, caffeine pills and then cram. And we didn't learn much. We just wanted to get a good score. But as far as in business, the spaced repetition, the routine and the daily rituals mm -hmm. where you have this prime time that's uninterrupted, no distractions, and you're in total control, no email, no Facebook, no mobile phone. Yeah. Give us an example of what the ideal chief maker would live into as it relates to routine. Yeah, well, let me start with a story, Alex. A few years ago, um, I've worked a lot in elite sport as well. I suppose that's the other side to my history. I've spent a lot of time in corporate and I've spent a lot of time in elite sport. And there are lessons we can learn from both. About, uh, I think about four years ago now, I was coaching Martina Natradilova. You know, she's one of the greatest tennis players of all time. And we were talking a bit about routine because the one thing elite sport does better than business by a mile is the quality of its routine. And also it doesn't view it in a negative way. Routine is another word for it. It's automate the pursuit of excellence. Right? When you don't have the right routine and discipline, you'll find that your excellence wavers and goes in different directions. But there's also very specific steps. And this is what I work with Martina on. At the time, she was coaching Agnes Radvanska, who was number five in the world uh, for tennis. And what was going on for Martina was they would get into a major like the US Open. And it's a very intense, contracted period of time where you play every second day. And it's very challenging for the athlete, very challenging for the coaches to pass on the right information. Now, what was going on was Agnes would come off the court and they would go into the warm down room. And in the warm down room, they would start doing their review. Right, they do a detailed review. Now, Alex, there's a problem with doing the review directly after a performance. Right? It's a mistake a lot of people make. They walk out of a meeting, they start doing a review. You haven't had recovery yet. So the athlete hadn't had recovery and Martina and the other coaches hadn't had recovery yet. So there's a routine that, uh, that's in the book. It's called Prepare, Perform, Recover, Review. And it's basically the elite high-performance life cycle used by elite sport and how to use it in business. And when you put this discipline in place, you will find that the world starts to make a lot more sense. You get this metronomic heartbeat or this drumbeat to your life that just keeps bringing you back to center. And when you get the recovery right, and when you get the review right, you'll watch your performance continue to go up and up and up. Um, you know, that means a lot to me because um, 
I was a national class athlete and I know a lot of um, concert level musicians. And I also need, know a lot of world-class um, performers. And if there's a review right after the performance, there hasn't been enough exhale time and they're still in the zone of where they were because they're at that unconscious competence level and they haven't had enough time to uh, decompress and they're the same person they were during the competition so it, yeah. it never sinks in so with martina um mm. what did you tell her in order i guess in an unoffensive way to yeah. wait and do the review later and how does she respond yeah, look, she was very open to it. And it's one of the things you find about pros or certainly the greatest of all time. Like they have an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. So she just wanted to listen and to learn, right? And so I, I taught her this model, prepare, perform, recover review. It's in the book. And then all I said to her is what we have to do is when, when, because what was going on, the consequence of not having a break was they weren't reaching into the soul of the athlete and therefore they weren't actually getting a response there was no good connection or rapport there, which is so important. So we were able to rebuild their, their schedule, basically. That says when she comes off court, she does recovery. Warm down, proper recovery. So does Martina and the coach. At that point, they send off some data to get some statistics and video analysis done by somebody else. And they would all meet again the next morning for a proper review session with good data, good, good video, proper analysis, and present it in a way to a, in a good way to a now fresh athlete. And it made all the difference. All of a sudden, the athlete had buy-in. Well, one area that applies into business is as a copywriter or as an author, mm -hmm. if you edit right after you write, you're not gonna be a good editor because you're still in writing yeah. mode. Yeah. Um, if um, you've just given a presentation on stage and you blew it or you did really mm -hmm. well, reviewing backstage or in the green room, it's not going to sink in because you still have that oh. adrenaline. So that's the same yeah. as what you're talking about, correct? Exactly the same, Alex. And it, it, what we talk about throughout the book, throughout that particular chapter is how you optimize your routine and how you optimize every single step. So how do you do active recovery? How do you do passive recovery? Because we're busy people. We can't always be sleeping, right? <laughs> We'd love to have a nap every single day. So it's not the case. We're too busy. How do you do good quality review, get the right data, the right people, the right metrics? How do you present it in a way that gives you key insight? Like if you're going to review a presentation, what's one of the best things you can do is get a full transcript and then read what you said. Does it even make sense when you read it? This is another lens, right? Or get a video of it. Watch a video of yourself and see how you come across. Talk about how do you prepare meticulously and things like that. So it's got, got the depth to it. Yeah, chapter two, routine. Context is decisive. You got to get out of the context yeah. to describe the content. Chapter four, all about mm. assets. And yeah. assets are more than just financial assets. I mean, there's a, there are other types of species of assets, especially in business and in personal life. Mm. Uh, give us a story yeah. about that. Okay, so the best way to think about assets, and the reason I called it assets and not skills because they're two different things. An asset is something that is valuable and people will pay a premium for if it's good. It's also something that keeps giving back. So what, what don't you think about, Alex, is a house, right? If, I, if you're going to go and buy a house, there's a whole set of factors that decide whether or not you're going to pay a premium for that house. It's location, the quality of painting, the fixtures, the layout, um, distance to the local train or the shops. All these things have a very, very important part to play in how much you're going to pay for that house. As now, well as, as well as if you have kids, because then you're looking at school districts exactly. and other yeah. considerations. So if you're an empty yeah. nester and the kids are gone, or if you're yeah. single, if you're married, that house assessment is going to vary. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Absolutely. And, and, and here's the thing. What, one of the things that this book teaches you to do is to view yourself as a professional services firm of one. You are, even if you work full-time for someone, you are on a full-time contract. Someone is paying you for a service that you offer. And that service and how good you can provide or how well you can provide that service will determine how much they're going to pay for you. So assets include things like your technical skills, your tactical skills, your network, Alex, can be highly valuable to a company your track record and experience. You can walk into a company and say, hey, listen, I've done this incredible turnaround. Like I've helped people get on the board of major companies. You know what? People pay a premium for that. 
What are they paying you a premium for? So think about your skills, think about your, um, your network, think about your track record and all your experience. And does that provide something that is valuable? Does that mean you can do the job better and better and better? Because the more you can do that, the more you have an asset base that's unique and valuable and serves your ideal customer, guess what? The more opportunities you're gonna get, you're actually gonna to come to you, you're gonna get promoted, you're gonna earn more money, right? You are an asset. Build yourself into an irre irreplaceable asset that just demands and commands attention and income. Well, let's talk about uh, chapter five. You talk about track record. Now, people yeah. just starting out don't feel they have one, but that's not always true. Uh, there's a concept called imposter syndrome, which you'll be talking about on how to avoid no matter what level you're at during the bonus yeah. webinar, which you'll get yeah. more uh, information on in, in just a moment. Mm. But there's also dinosaur syndrome, which I've suffered from where, where I was online mm. as a digital marketer in 1995, which makes me BG, which is before Google. And so many of my students are now my teachers. And sometimes I feel like, uh, well, I'm not an imposter, but am I yeah. a dinosaur? And these questions come up. Mm. How do you play track record into the chief maker concept? In the end, Alex, it's all like, I think it really is all about track record because if you can walk in and tell a story about how you've taken a team or a business from this point to this point in performance, and it's a clear upward trajectory, you've got the numbers to show for it you are going to demand attention. You are going, you're just going to have opportunities come your way. As long as you're a good person, a likable person, and people know about you and you've got a track record, things are going to come your way. It's the easiest way to get results. Right? We talk about this as a small business owner. If you've got results you can tell people about, that's the ultimate testimonial. Any company always talks about their guarantee and their results. And that all comes from track record, right? In, in looking at... Um becoming the chief maker and assuming that as you're watching right now, you're buying into what Greg is saying, because I am, I, I am because I've already hmm. read the book in digital format and in physical format, but the digital format, which is Kindle, that's what you have access to for 99 cents. Cause we want to bend over backwards so that you get it and write a review because the moment you declare what you liked about a specific chapter, not the whole book, you don't have to read the whole book, hmm. just pick a chapter and write a review. Um, in your biggest takeaway or aha moment, we call it the pack my bag moment where you could pack your bags and not read the rest of the book because it's so valuable, but you're mm. going to do it anyway because you know there's more there. Um, what are the obstacles? We'll call them the chief obstacles that get in the way of the five steps. Now, in, in dentistry, they call it the chief complaint that a patient has when they walk in and step into the dental chair. What's the chief obstacles that you've experienced that kind of are the locked doors that require keys. And not every door has a key that's already made. There's no one size fits all. So you got to have different keys, which are yeah. strategies to unlock mm -hmm. those doors in the way. So give us a few of them. Yeah, sure. I'll show you a quick diagram, Alex, because this, this sums up most people's career, career progression, right? I, I don't know if you can see this quite well. Does that come up nice and clear for you? It does. I see career progression, the valley of death, which doesn't sound very good to me, but keep going. Yeah, so if you see that, if you start out in the very bottom of that, of that graph, and it sort of goes through this little journey that goes up, and then there's a dip. And that's where we go the first seven years of being professional. That's how most people's career goes, right? Then a number of people, about 20% of people, jump to the next level, which is manager, Right. And then they spend about seven years in that role. And then a bunch of those go from the valley of death, come out the other side into GM, and the rest go up into chief. The more higher you go, the more money you earn, the more impact you have. Now, what I want to talk to you about, and this is what you're saying here, is about what holds people back, is what tends to happen is people go along in their career, and then what happens is they enter this valley of death. Right? And this is the majority of people. That is, they get stuck or stalled in their progression. They go up then they stall in their progression, this valley of death. And if they don't do something, if they don't come to this realization, this coming to Jesus moment, they don't jump to the next level. And the people that do are the ones that skip quickly. They get to the top really, really fast. Or they get from university or college to CEO in under 20 years, right? Now, here are some other things that you have to come to understand. The very first one is the world doesn't owe you anything, right? Even if you've done some hard work in your life, 
The world doesn't owe you anything just because you're a hard worker, right? It just doesn't. I'm really sorry. I'd love to be able to say just because of all the hard work, you're going to be CEO, but it's not the case. You have to play a smart game and realize that you are actually playing a game. And the game is like this. Consider yourself as an athlete. How do you get on the first team? What have you got to do to prove to the head coach that you are worthy for being on the first team? So you've got to drop that sense of entitlement. Number two, you've got to drop some of the, some of the bullshit beliefs you're probably carrying about what you're capable of, right? Uh, there's, a, there's a funny thing, like I, and we'll talk more about this in the post webinar, but uh, uh, when we talk about imposter syndrome, but there's this thing in the world which sort of says to me that if you believe in what you're doing, right, or no matter where those beliefs come from, you can do it. But not everybody has those beliefs. They carry... They carry something that's, that's dragging them from the past. But in working with the big dogs and all the chiefs I've worked with, there's two things I've realized. Number one, there is no blue pill, right? You can't just take a pill, a panacea or a cure all and expect to get to the top. And number two, magic isn't real, right? Magic doesn't exist. I, I spent time living and training with the Shaolin monks, the Kung Fu monks in China, right? And while I was in there, I, I watched a guy in my troop. I watched him learn how to break a brick on his head. Now, I don't know. Have you ever seen video of these guys, Alex? Uh, it, do doesn't, it doesn't look real. I wonder if the bricks are real or not, but they're pretty astounding. Yeah, they are absolutely astounding. Here's the thing, right? They are absolutely real, right? And I've seen them throw needles through a pane of glass, right? And what I've now also seen is a completely average person like me who went from outside to inside. I watched another guy who was an Irish guy. I watched him over about a three-month period learn to break a brick over his head. Now, to me, that's impossible, right? I don't know how the hell you do that. But I watched them and they went through this little process where they shaved his head and they started toughening up the skin on top of his head by making him stand on his head, right? Built up the shoulders. Then they got a really brittle brick and they smashed it on top of his head. And they got a stronger brick and a stronger brick. And by the time he got to the end, guess what? He had a really powerful brick. And when he did it in front of an entire audience, I can tell you now the brick was that powerful. You could hear the crack across the courtyard and he did it in, like in front of a thousand people. So it's absolutely real, but there's always a step-by-step -step process. If you're looking for a shortcut, it won't work. People, I think, get stuck in the world and they get on the, the treadmill and then they make one or two major mistakes. They go, if I work harder, it'll come, right? If I take a shortcut, it'll come. Neither work, not if you want to be the chief. Well, in, uh, in business, especially in retail, when a grocery store or any retail store changes merchandise, there's something called the J curve. And what happens mm. is you have the same amount of traffic. You think that you have a better selection. You've mm. done your research and you know that other stores are selling it um, mm. and it's, it's just jumping off the shelves. But because it's new to your ongoing customers and patrons, then there's the shape of a J that uh, there's no hockey stick growth here. It just, it goes down first and then comes yeah. back up. Now, this is, yeah. a, this is a J that is going into the valley of death that you're talking about, yeah. but it's only the valley of death if you don't continue to go. Then That's you're right. stuck there and you don't think there's a way out when, you know, there is an opening. Yeah. There, there is yeah. a, there's an alley that you can walk through, but, you know, you have Absolutely. to walk through. So to make it concrete, yeah. can you give an example of maybe a client that yeah. uh, was stuck in the valley of death and uh, you were kind of the Sherpa to get that yeah. person out. Yep, sure. So the, just a quick explanation of the valley of death. To get out of the valley of death and to go to the next level, each time you've got to get game plan routines, entourage assets, track record right. And you've got to evolve because every time you go to the next level, those five things will slightly change. Right, so you can't just, you can't have game plan, routines, entourage, et cetera as a professional and expect that that game plan will get you to the top. You've got to evolve. Well, let me, let me speak to that just for a minute because um, mm. when you have a new game plan, you got a new set of rules mm. and when That's you got right. a new set of rules, mm. you have to abide by those rules so that you can play to win. Otherwise you're exactly. pretending to play. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Now let me give you the perfect example. Do you like the movie Top Gun? Yeah. I think everyone knows it who's watching. Yeah. Tom, Tom Cruise, Top Gun, you know, and anyway, Maverick and Goose are sent to top gun school. What actually happens in the business world is exactly the same. You start out at the bottom and 100% of people, if, if you're any good, you'll rise to the next level, right? 
But now it's only, you're only competing against the top 20%. Then you go to the next level. When you start hitting more like general manager or VP type level in the States, now you're only against the one percenters. So all of a sudden, the game gets much harder. And so many people assume that their progression will continue, but it won't because now you're competing against much stiffer competition. To go to the next level, to get to sea level is like 0.1% of the population. You know, this is the... This is really, really hard. Well, well you know, any, any student, Greg, can relate to this. My son, uh, mm. being an athlete in the eighth grade, was number one in the entire region, in the city. Yeah. And then he was a freshman in high school the next year, and he was no longer number one. And it didn't sit That's very right. well with him because there were seniors mm. there. And then yeah. now he's senior year, and he's number one rower um, yeah. in the entire region. And now... He is um, uh, a candidate for university and college, mm. and he's not going to be number one when he gets there because the seniors there yeah. um, are at an all-new level. So you're not the yeah. same person, and you're not playing by mm. the same set of rules, and the competition is yeah. completely different, like professional, mm. university, yeah. and hobby mm. level in athletics, correct? Yeah. Exactly. And let me give an example. Actually, you asked for an example of a client that um, had, had made some changes – what we did. So we looked at this guy. He was actually quite senior already. He was in a general management type role. And we looked at how he was going across the five elements. And what was really clear to me quite quickly was he was playing the wrong game. Okay. So he didn't have a great reputation with the executive team. Now, this guy was smart, very smart. Like he could really do some good stuff. He was making a difference in the business. He was making an impact, but he wasn't getting the credit for what he was doing. All right. I looked at him and thought, you could actually be a good C-level guy. You could definitely be on the executive team of a major company. So what we did is we got his game plan right. We sat him down and worked out his unique value, what he brought to the table that no one else did. We turned his boss into his number one customer. And when he started to see that he was a professional services firm of one and he had to make a difference for the person who was employing him, then only then would he actually get some cut through. Now, very quickly, and I'm talking about two months later, up until this point, he had had no cut through with the executive team. Two months later, he's at a board meeting in London and he's got the whole executive team and he's got all the board there. And the COO gets up and said, this guy here is doing a brilliant job. He's making a real difference in the business and there's bigger things to come for him. That was not going to happen before. You know where job, you know what his job is now? No. Three years later, he's CEO. Wow. Three. Wow. Three. Well, and that's skipping a level, mate. That's going general manager to through COO to CEO. Three years. And he just got his game plan right. Well, th three years because, um, you know, he accelerated through the process. I love that you go through the five steps at every level. And the key is situational yeah. awareness. You talked about Top Gun. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. When you're a jet fighter pilot, the most important thing with mm -hmm. your wingman or wing person yeah. is to have situational awareness where you are. Because if you're 18 inches away from the, the wing of the next plane, if you don't know where you're at, you're, you're in big trouble. Yeah. So if you're in the valley of death and you don't realize it, or if you're on the upswing and you think you're in the valley yeah. of death, yeah. then it's trouble and struggle. You want to speak to that for a moment? Absolutely. The, the, if you think for a minute, when I said to you, draw your career trajectory, I don't know if you've ever done that, right? And most people I, I know don't or have never done this. So you draw your trajectory and it'll look something like this. It'll go along and then at some point, particularly if you're listening to this, you probably find out it starts to plateau. Now, most people play a little, a little trick on themselves. They say, they say, it'll be all right. I'll get through this. She'll be right. In Australia, we say, she'll be right, mate. And you know what happens? She won't be right. And you won't get the promotion because you have to stand back and understand why you have plateaued, why you're in the J curve. Okay. And it's likely because you don't stand out from the competition like, you, like you're telling yourself you are. You might think you're amazing. I mean, have you ever walked away from a, um, a, a big interview or maybe not so much you anymore, but maybe in your early days and you didn't get the job and you were so disappointed they couldn't see the value in you, right? It's because you're not seeing you, right? Because even as, as a business, a part, you don't get a partnership deal you wanted to get. Why don't? Well, they didn't see the value in you you wanted to see. And that's a bit of hard news, right? But these are the real good questions. When you ask these questions, and I get my clients to create a competitor analysis scorecard where they put themselves, 
like this create a, spread, a spreadsheet with themselves versus two or three other candidates in the market and do a proper analysis of how they stack up. And I reckon we have, like I've done that hundreds of times with athletes, sorry, with, with executives. And I can't think of, or oh, maybe more than three or four people that when they did that, they would have selected themselves. In almost all cases, they would have selected another candidate over themselves because they looked better. Well, um, we have a saying, you can't read the label from inside the jar. Now, oh, I yeah. am not employable. I've never been an executive. I've never worked for a corporation. I've always mm -hmm. been an entrepreneur. And in some times I've suffered and in other times I've prospered and uh, we're on a prosperous tra trajectory. There are these ebbs and flows that happen, but let me be perfectly clear. You are not as good as you think you are. I'm talking about you. You're watching right now. You're not as good as you think you are. You're better. And so if you just accept that fact and forget mm. about the imposter syndrome that will creep up on you or dinosaur syndrome, if mm. you're an elder and you've done your work in your industry and you feel like these young folks are, are taking you over, it's very, very common now with baby boomers. I'm on the very last year of the baby boom. I'm 1964. I want you to know that you are a maker of chiefs if you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad. You got these little chiefs if you have kids, mm -hmm. and that's your executive team. And that is that executive team will put one over on you if you don't really understand what's happening. And when they become uh, potty trained, well, there's five steps there. And then when mm -hmm. they start to drive, there's five steps there. And then in the elder uh, teens, then everything changes. Yeah. You see them less and less. And so just because this was written for the corporate world and for business, it's still mm. relevant for the household because you are the CEO of your household. And at least you, if you have kids at home or mm. if you're in a relationship with someone else in a household, you are the chief maker or co-chief maker at some point when you put that hat on and you come back yeah. from your your corporate or from your entrepreneurial job, what happens is you lose status because yeah. you may be leading a team in the business world, but you come home and your partner or your kids, they know what you're all about and you don't get the same level of respect or influence that you would have. You have to try that much harder. Uh, you have kids, you have one on the way. Uh, any advice to those who, um, when they come home, they don't get the, the level of uh, support that they think they deserve? Yeah, look, um, I'm a really big, and as you say, like I've got twin boys that are two and a half and um, this book was, was written when they were six months old between 5am and 7am at my local cafe. I've got a cafe that opens early and I sat there in the window eating and drinking long blacks and that, you know why it worked? Because my wife and I have a vision and we have some really clear understanding of how the house works, right? And so if you're in a household that's busy and most people have this crazy busy lifestyle these days that have often multiple professionals in the house, kids, mortgage, all this life, just set a bit of a vision and a strategy for how you're going to run your house. You know what? Use in the game plan section of this book, you can, you'll be able to see very, very quickly how you can set up that, set that up for a game plan for your home. And that'll make life way easier. Well, the, um, life is a game and you're playing it. The, the thing is, you know, how are you playing? And, and that brings me to where we are right now. You have a decision to make. Uh, it's one thing reading a book, but you can't learn as much as the author explaining the book. So here's your next step. Go to Amazon and this will take you exactly to the right page. The Kindle version is 99 cents. That's US, less than one US dollar. If you go to beyondbooksales.com forward slash CM, it will forward to the page where you can get access to the Kindle. And you can look inside the book if you feel like risking 99 cents is too much. So at least you get some insight of what's inside. And then after you've done that, then the next step is to ethically bribe you to come to a bonus webinar to talk about imposter syndrome, how to avoid it, and how to become a sustainable influencer in your personal and professional life. You'll be shocked at some of the stories that Greg is gonna share with you. And the second URL is beyondbooksales.com forward slash CM bonus. Now you'll be asked to copy and paste your proof of purchase because that's how you'll earn the right to get there. And let me show you that page again. Um, 
if you go to Amazon, you will see right here and right now, you'll see Chief Maker here. You, you can click on look inside. And if you look inside, you can read the introduction and keep reading there. And if you think that you're ready to go, then go to the Kindle and you, you see the five stars. And once you go to the Kindle, you'll end up um, purchasing it. Now here are the table of contents, chapter one, um, the great method, uh, step one, the game plan, uh, step two, routines, what we, what we talked about, entourage, your support network. You know, the Aussies have different words for different things, but there you go. Uh, step four is assets, bringing more to the table. Uh, step five is the track record and then sticking the landing, just like in gymnastics, and then uh, the afterward. One thing that Greg has said since I've known him is, um, you know, live an epic life. And that's what, that's what I've loved about him because bottom line is when you look at the potential of living, wh why not go all out? And so we're not asking you to go all out with your wallet or purse. The Kindle's 99 cents. Buy it and then come back to the web page I gave you and copy and paste your proof of purchase so you can share again with us the bonus webinar of which you'll see the date and time when you go to that page. It's very, very simple and you're saving 93% from the normal price. Why are we doing this? We're doing this so that it makes your decision easy and there's no J curve in this purchase. So once again, go to beyondbooksales.com forward slash CM. You can also go to Amazon and just type in Chief Maker. Um, it's going to be an Amazon bestseller in many, many categories. Go ahead and do that. And then why are we doing ethical bribery? Well, it's self-serving benevolence. Let me tell you the self-serving part. One thing about Amazon is Jeff Bezos, the richest person in the world right now, one thing that his algorithm at Amazon does is after you have 100 five-star reviews, and we can't ask for five-star reviews, but it would be nice if you, you know, gave it a shot, but after a 100 five-star reviews, all of a sudden the algorithm kicks in and Greg's book shows up as recommendations in many, many more places and it sustains bestseller status. So that's the self-serving part. I think that's fair for 99 cents. Now the benevolent part is you get a 90 minute bonus webinar and here is the registration. Get access to it, just write a certified review and it's beyond booksales.com forward slash CM bonus. Make sure you have both URLs. This is the one you got to remember after purchasing the book and writing the review. It's simple. It'll just take less than an hour out of your day to read a chapter and give a review on that chapter. Don't worry about reading the entire book. It's a super easy read. Hopefully you'll be reading it again and again and again. I read the summaries the first time around along with the table of contents. And then I came back and I highlighted the book and I came back and I underlined the book and I came back again and I tabbed the book. So I call it a slow read book. It took me about three and a half weeks to read, but I feel like I know almost as much as Greg does and I didn't have to go through all of the mistakes, the trouble and struggle that he had to go through in order to write it. So final question for you, Greg, if you were to look over someone's shoulder who's reading this book and um, you saw them flip through the pages, um, what, what advice would you offer, uh, offer them as the author so that they don't feel like they're missing out on any of the insights that you have to offer? Because many times people have blind spots or they don't know what to look for and you're there just kind of whispering in their ear and saying, hey, hey, mate, what, uh, you just missed a page. What would you whisper in their ear? I would say that there's, a, there's likely a gap between where you are and what you'd be if you'd fully tapped your potential. So you've got untapped potential. And the thing, if you, what I want you to look for in this book is the step-by-step -step process for finding another 10% of bridging that gap. You know, there's a guy, a guy called Norman Doidge. I don't know if you've heard of him. He talks about neuroplasticity and the fact that our brain can change itself. Even though we're, we start it with a DNA and a gene set, which is hardwired, our brain can adapt to the world around us. We're actually, we are totally built to adapt and grow and change over time. As you read this book, remember you are hardwired to adapt, to grow, to change. There is always a step in the process. The process to mastery is a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process. I've been through all 
the tough journeys and the hard things. I've tested this stuff on myself. I've worked with some of the, the biggest CEOs going around and I can tell you right now what I teach them is stuff that's not in business school. Don't look for a classic management book here. This is about you becoming the best version of yourself. So be prepared to bring the extra energy and the extra insight that you're going to require in order to take your game to one more level. Well, and here's the thing, uh, neuroplasticity of the brain, and there's also the purpose of the brain. If you ask uh, most uh, brain experts, why, what's the number one purpose of the brain? What's its main role? And they will tell you two words, conserve energy. The purpose of the brain is to have you conserve energy because the more energy you conserve, the longer you can go. And remember, we weren't meant to find food in the grocery stores. We weren't meant to find uh, our mate um, dating or being introduced to them. <laughs> we were out there amongst the saber-toothed tigers. And uh, many times we, we wouldn't see another person that looked just like us in our own size you know, for months. And so if you go back to the, to the original purpose of the brain, it's to conserve energy. This book allows you to do that five steps at a time at each level. So on behalf of Greg Layton, his family, and the baby on the way, go <laughs> get this book because within the first few chapters, you will see that it's very special in the way you rethink your career and the way you approach it. Uh, Greg, in a moment, I'm going to give you the final word and then we'll wrap this up. Right now, I hope we've done our job. You're still here. So what are you waiting for? Go get the book. Join us for the bonus webinar. Super, super fun. And why not get the book as a gift? It's only 99 cents. Maybe you know someone who's struggling in the areas that we've talked about, whether in their personal or professional life. I'm gonna, if it sounds like I want you to buy the book, you're right, it's 99 cents. So I'm not gonna pull any punches there. Absolutely, and then the review is what's most important for the bonus webinar. Greg, you got the final word. Yeah, and I, I want you to buy the book too, you know, because one of the reasons I, I wrote the book is because I want, I, I, my goal is that every single person that reads the book has a promotion or gets a pay rise one year earlier than what would happen normally. Right, I don't know how much that would be worth for most people, maybe 10,000, maybe 50,000. If they're quite senior, it could be a hundred or $200,000 if we bring forward a promotion just one year by getting your game plan routines entourage assets and track records sorted. So, you know, 99 cents is the best return on investment you'll ever make, right? And that's how Chiefs view themselves. Chiefs view books as a return on investment. And if, you, if you're viewing it as an expense, then you, you'll never be a chief. Well, plus um, you can reread the book a month from now and you'll be a different person and you may get yep. different insights mm. because you're looking through a different lens and you're probably mm. in, a, in a different valley. So um, I'd like to end this by you giving a high five to the camera and I'll give one as well. And then from 7,000 miles away, <laughs> I hope our paths cross again. Go get the book. We'll see you on the webinar. All good wishes.